So one of the most intriguing questions in Earth history is to understand how the atmosphere came to be the way it is, and in particular, how it came to have about 21% oxygen, which is the amount of oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere. And that's a really important question because without all that oxygen in the atmosphere, you and I and all the animals that we're familiar with uh, would be unable to live because we require oxygen for our metabolism. And we know from looking at the history of the Earth that the Earth wasn't always that way. About halfway through Earth history, there was a big change in the amount of oxygen. Around two and a half billion years ago, a little after that, um, we went through a large, what's called a great oxidation event, where the amount of oxygen went from vanishingly small amounts to substantial amounts. And later on, it increased even more to the levels that we have today. So it's taken a long time for us to figure out that that's probably what happened, this big, great oxidation event, this big change in oxygen in the environment. And what we want to know now is, how did that come about? We think that to get large amounts of oxygen in the atmosphere, you need to have photosynthesis. You need to have at least microbes making O2 in large amounts that can even accumulate in the environment. But we don't know how early that happened. We don't know the antiquity of that photosynthetic process. One possibility is that that photosynthetic process uh, evolved um, around two and a half billion years ago, about half with the Earth history, and very quickly uh, exerted its influence on the environment. But another possibility is that the production of oxygen is much older than the Great Oxidation event. Perhaps a billion years or even more before the Great Oxidation event. Maybe the, that metabolism is very ancient. Maybe microbes were producing oxygen, but for various reasons that oxygen was unable to build up in the atmosphere. And those reasons could be, for example, the reaction of oxygen with iron 2 plus dissolved in rocks. That's a reduced form of iron which reacts with oxygen, consumes oxygen in the process of making iron oxides like the hematite that makes up the jasper here. Um, oxygen also can react with, uh, with gases coming from volcanoes, uh, which, which are very reactive towards oxygen, consume it. So it's possible that oxygen was being produced by photosynthetic microbes for a long time and simply wasn't accumulating in the atmosphere because it was reacting uh, with all sorts of materials in the environment uh, of that time. So how do we figure that out? How do we tell which is the case? Is it that photosynthesis came along and rapidly changed the planet? Or is photosynthesis much older than that and it took a long time before it exerted its, its impact on the planet? And the way we do that is by looking at old rocks. We look for evidence of small amounts of oxygen in the environment, like uh, perhaps the, the red uh, jaspers here. They may be a fingerprint of small amounts of oxygen in the environment. And we look for fossils. We look for things like stromatolites, uh, which are uh, fossilized forms of bacterial mats, uh, possibly cyanobacteria, which we know today cyanobacteria can produce oxygen. So if we find stromatolites in ancient rocks, that gets us quite excited because that at least raises the possibility that there were microbes living at that time producing oxygen. And so this is a large uh, part of the reason that so many geoscientists are interested in this area in Western Australia, where we have well-preserved rocks uh, from two and, a, two and a half billion years ago and older, like these rocks that are about three and a half billion years old. We have rocks that tell us about the chemistry uh, in the oceans at that time, which tells us about dissolved oxygen in the water, which, which can t tell us things about the oxygen in the atmosphere. And we have rocks that uh, can preserve ancient fossils. We find stromatolites in old rocks uh, in this region. Um, and so we want to study those to understand were those indeed stromatolites formed by cyanobacteria that might have been producing oxygen. So this area in Western Australia is a very unique area. It, it has lots of pieces of the puzzle that we try to put together uh, to understand what the ancient earth and life on that ancient earth were like.